backyard. Hold on. Let me close my window. Mm-hmm. You guys can say hi. There's like this Asian lady that just chills in my backyard. <laughs> um, yeah. Hey guys. Uh, we're live and we have interesting topics for today. And yeah, that's that's my seven second spiel. I don't know. <laughs> hey guys, what's going on? Comic talk is back. Yeah, it is. We're just hanging around for a second, see if anybody jumps in. My mouse pad is breaking. I just bought a new one. It's a uh, Punisher one. So it's <laughs> Punisher logo on the mouse pad. We so that's moving, pretty cool. Just, my mom just had like this really high tech looking one, and I was like, "Hey, can I have that?" She's like, "Yeah." I was gonna throw it away. I was like, "Why don't you throw that away?" It's, yeah. It's like a blackbird. Uh, I don't know, but uh, yeah. Comic world. What's up? Not much. We're here with you guys again. Should okay. be fun. You sound a little glum today. Oh no. no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, yeah, we can go ahead and get right into it. All right, what's the first topic? First topic, first topic. Let me get it pulled up. All right, yeah, so the Comic Talk website. I made a video about this, um, and since this goes up on everybody's channel, we can make talk about it for a little bit. Um, I set up a website. I know me and um, me and Comic World had talked about it previously. Um, so I, when my sleep schedule was all messed up, at 3 in the morning, I uh, created a website for <laughs> Comic Talk, and uh, you guys can check it out in the description. Um, we have, what, exclusive content that we'll be posting there, all of the Comic Talk episodes, about pages, a form for you guys to talk up. Each form has one. So there's a form for me, uh, Comic World, and uh, Nerd Hype. So everybody has their own individual form, suggestion forms. There's really a lot of cool stuff. And even a spinning logo, because I thought that was reminiscent of old school comics. <laughs> oh, yeah. The old Batman logo. Da, 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 da. Yeah, I was just watching this like film, this like short film earlier, and it was like old school Batman becomes new Batman, and uh, he was like in his Adam West type of like super ugly like eyebrow drawn on mask and yeah. old school suit, and then uh, he like gets this latex or whatever like molten latex or something poured on him and he like transforms into the new suit Batman. It's like the weirdest thing ever. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. So what do you guys think about the website? Looks pretty cool so far and I I really love the additions of us uh, having our channels on the forum so thank you for that. Um, And I think it's going to be a good medium for users and subscribers to come and you know talk to us even just on the forums you know leave us any questions you know and um, great media for uh, it's a great source of media for posting your videos and exclusive content. So all you guys make sure you go check that out. I will be contributing exclusive content to the site as well. Yeah, and I'll go ahead and um, if you guys I don't know I haven't told you guys yet. If you make accounts in the forum, just you two, um, I can make you admin so you can like control stuff. Perfect. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 So just it. if you just make an account, it'll tell me, and then. Um, just let me know when you're on, and I can just access your account, make you an admin. Okay. And then yeah, cool. um, I'll, I'll get it all figured out. We can talk about this later off stream, but uh, about uploading videos and exclusive stuff. But yeah, so um, I and also one of the things is um, domains. We have to pay. Did, were, were one of you guys just on the website? Yes, me. Oh uh, yeah, I just saw. I just saw like yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was like online. Anonymous, yeah. Um, and so, uh, if you guys ever want to donate to, I don't know if you guys have donation things, but um, set up donation things for the website so we can uh, help fund for like the domain and stuff. So there's not all these annoying website banners, like, because it's kind of annoying. Yeah, I know. Um, and so yeah, there was I was gonna pay for it myself the other day, but I just didn't get around to it um, for the first month because there's like a deal or like first couple months um, but yeah so right now we have a free domain in place um, but there's still ads on the website so 
So uh, just just about to shout out to the users and the subscribers. Uh, if you want to help donate to Comic Talk website, it just helps makes the um, the website more easier and more accessible to you. So that would be great. Yeah, and I'll um I'll go ahead and set up like a, a donation thing in the comic name of Comic Talk, and we can. I'll give everybody access to it, so that way there's no, like, tomfoolery, people taking stuff out. Um, but, yeah, so if you guys do decide to donate, though, we're going to probably eventually, because it's just a free building thing, we might hire a website designer to, like, you know, make it... It's cool right now, but to make it, like, super professional. Um, and it wouldn't be too much different, but we can also pay for the domain, and that way it's not some long link. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, I don't I don't know if people are aware of this as well, but we actually do have a domain over at Nerd Hype. It's www.nerd-hype.com and it's still a work in progress, but right now basically all it does is it pulls off the videos off YouTube and it has them in an easy playlist format on the website. It'll later on be a, a thing for like blogs, for articles, for forums as well. We will have all that set up, but right now this is just what we have set up, and we really uh, we're just kind of fortunate to get it because we have our good friend. Um, I don't know if you guys ever watched the uh, Dragon Ball Z Infinity Cast. Our friend Gibson Lazak, he's actually a web designer, and he managed to give us domain on one of his uh, servers, so we weren't really paying that much for it. Oh, that's that's cool. So we were pretty awesome. fortunate fortunate on that. Yeah. Nice, nice. That's cool. I just I'm on it right now. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. Looks nice. Let me see on the top little logo. Even included the uh, on the Avengers. little tab. It has the Avengers A. Yeah. Yeah, I noticed that. That's pretty cool. Thought that was a nice little touch. Yeah, definitely. Um, I want to point out again that me and uh, explaining MCU. We have we also have Patreon. If you guys want to help us, you know, if you yeah. guys want to go um, pledge or donate, you know, and you'll you'll get exclusive content on there as well. And you will be helping me, and you're gonna be helping you know make the YouTube channel better. By me uh, buying better mics and such as and stuff like that. Yeah, same goes here. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely pretty helpful and rewarding to you and for everybody. Yes, sir. Yep, yep. All right. It has been. I f keep forgetting to set my timer. Um. <laughs> yeah. So uh, so that was our just little website thing. We can go ahead and move on to uh. Comic stuff at for real. <laughs> yeah, and let's move on to that. It's when I at the time of writing this, it was what more than forty comic covers leaked, and I think it's been confirmed that these are the the comic covers. Um, with uh, comic stores being given lists of what's going to happen after, uh, what is it? Secret Wars. Post Secret Wars, yeah. Yeah, they're kind mm -hmm. of like it's kind of is it is it kind of like a reboot? So I don't want to use reboot. Well, and then it's not. A, it is it essentially it is a reboot without technically being a reboot because it's like a uh, like a. Sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you, but it's not like a character's reboot of sorts. It's like in a way it is because it, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but there's like a different Hulk now, and there's different yeah, 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 types yeah, yeah. of you know characters. Like we have instead of the young Wolverine, we have Old Man Logan in the new continuity. So it is a reboot technically, but more it's more of Marvel trying to tidy up all its. Uh, stories and all its other continuities that it's not really using, and it's all putting them into one mainstream continuity. Yeah, yeah. I just meant when, um, like, it's not, like, when people think of, like, the Spider-Man reboot, they would think, like, how the movies would take it, and they would just reboot it again and again and again. Right. I'm saying more so, it's almost like, I feel like comparing it to how the New 52, like, when they, they t on DC totally, re like, redid everything, like, made it new again. Mm-hmm. Almost kind of like that, like an yeah. event, and then, and then they're what are they doing now? They're doing a, uh, what is it? Convergence. They were yeah. Convergence ended a little while ago, so now they're doing yeah, the no, Dark Side War done. and then, et cetera, et cetera. Hey, I I tried reading Convergence, but man, I, I got like I the, the fourth or fourth issue, and I couldn't like it was it was, it was not my cup of tea, you know. Yeah, and the, the thing with Convergence was that it just it kind of required knowledge from the oh, reader yeah, for the last definitely. 50 years. So if yeah. you haven't been keeping in the last 50 years of continuity of DC, you're just not going to get it. And it's a bunch of characters that aren't, basically aren't Batman, aren't Superman, aren't the Green Lantern, aren't Flash. So it's just like, 
a whole cup of who cares. As whereas Marvel, Marvel Secret Wars, it led into with like the heavy hitters. You got Spider Man, you got Star Lord, you got Black Panther, Reed Richards, Doctor Doom is God, and so you care because it's yeah. all your favorite characters all in the lineup. Yeah, and, and that was the problem with me. Like, I didn't know. Uh, um, I I don't know much about DC. So, and when I went into conversions, I was like, this this is pointless to me. You yeah, know, I don't care about these characters. Yeah, I I know probably more about DC than the average, just you know, maybe moviegoer or like just average. Oh, I I like Batman. I like Superman. I watch the movies. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know more, but I definitely nothing compared to like you know people that. Are hardcore DC. I know way, way, way more about Marvel than I do DC. Like, oh, I'm sure that's yeah. a given. But uh, like, yeah, I I like certain characters from DC, like Green Lantern and Flash. I love those characters. They're really interesting characters. They're de- especially with Flash being like, when you would think about superpowers, or when somebody asks you if you could have a superpower, would it be? People usually choose like I would fly or read minds or run super fast or things like that. Um. You know, Flash is like, I run really fast. <laughs> He's a kind of the old school superpower. Yeah. So let me ask you this. With all these uh, new covers being released uh, and all these new books being released, which ones are you guys more stoked for? Uh, I, I haven't uh, seen them, actually. The new Hulk. Because <laughs> I want to know who it is. Oh, yeah, definitely. I want to know who it is, too. Uh, actually, I don't know. I mean, Oh, uh, Spider-Gwen. Spider-Gwen? Yeah, Spider-Gwen. she's like my favorite character right now, besides Thanos, so Thanos takes a cake. I just looked up news, there's news that got updated five hours ago and three hours ago. Wow. They just released the official covers. Where was I today? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was recording things. Um, yeah, probably, probably, yeah, Spider-Gwen or... Mm. Hmm. I feel like I'm going to be reading a lot of these titles. A lot of these look really good. Um, the, I want to read the new Amazing Spider-Man speci- uh, specifically. And yeah, yeah. Dare, Daredevil Devil's Apprentice looks really good as well because he looks like he's back in his Shadowland costume. And uh, I don't know if you guys noticed, if you guys saw the cover, but the Apprentice kind of looks like Gambit. So imagine Gambit training under Matt Murdock. Oh, that'd be, that'd be cool. That'd be, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it does, actually. Yeah, and then I was uh, I was looking at the uh, Uncanny Avengers too, and the new Deadpool book because I'm a huge Deadpool fan. Yeah, I was looking so, at Deadpool, and that one looks cool. Deadpool being an Uncanny Avenger is a pretty legit team. I mean, the team itself it's got what? It's got Spider Man, Quicksilver, Brother Voodoo, um, Captain Steve Rogers, Rogue, Human Torch, and Deadpool. So that looks like a pretty crazy lineup. I'd watch that. Hell yeah! And I'm looking at a cover. It's um, what is it? Sam Wilson, Captain America. It looks like Steve Rogers and um, what is it Falcon now? They look old and like split apart. I feel as if you know, um, looks really Steve old. Rogers is, is taking the old Nick Fury spot. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like the old Commander spot. So I don't know, but there's a lot of these titles I'm pretty excited for that I'll probably yeah. read. Um, Especially, what is Silk? Is Silk a? Uh, is that something we've seen? I don't know. I thought like a Silk we've she seen. Looks kinda Silk looks kind of like a girl oh, yeah, Silk, yeah. Silk yeah, came yeah. out at the beginning of Spider Verse and at the end of Original Sin. It's all right. I mean, she's, I, I read, she's an interesting character. Yeah, she's definitely interesting. That's why I kept reading Silk, um, because her her background story is pretty interesting. You know, she's been like locked up in this place for like I don't I forgot how many years, like four years or something like that. And you know, she 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 was she wasn't uh, or Peter Parker wasn't the only one that was bitten by the spider, I believe. And then Silk got bitten by uh by that same radioactive spider. I feel like oh, what was I gonna say? Ah, oh, somebody, somebody say something. The crazy, <laughs> I the crazy, I'm totally confused. What the I was thing about that's to say. The, the thing that surprised me about the silk cover was that it's called the sinister silk. So are we gonna see her in a villain shape now? Because she's been oh, kind of like a sidekick, like, she's... like a sidekick to Peter Parker. Because like you know, she's in a bank, she's holding a bag of money. You know, a cops knocked down the corner, and then she's looking around like all sinister, like, and it's called the sinister silk. So that's what I'm wondering. I mean, is it going to be something where she's a villain now in this universe? Because she really wasn't in the last one. I, I, I think we I think it had be have to be explained in the uh, Spider Verse stories that are coming out of Secret Wars. Maybe it's a different alternate reality where Morlun managed to uh, corrupt her. 
and something. so she's be she's become bad or something. I'm not sure. Yeah, something I noticed is that Spider Man's like you know the Spider Man as a whole like uh, I don't, I'm missing the words, but they have like so many of Spider Man's characters and things that revolve around him are getting are getting their own things like Carnage, Venom, Spider Man 2099, Web Warriors. Amazing Spider-Man, then we have, like we were saying, Silk and uh, Miles Morales, and there's just a bunch of, like, Spider-Man characters that are getting their own thing. Spider-Gwen, not to mention, uh, like... Yeah, there's a lot of them. He's a... I feel like they're they're not overdoing it, but there's a lot that they're doing with Spider-Man, because it's popular, but um, I kind of wish they would have rebooted maybe more... How would I put it? Uh, Lesser-known characters. Well, they did Howard the Duck, though. Howard the, Duck, awesome. Howard the Duck. The Howard the Duck uh, series that's been going on is pretty funny. Yeah, it looks funny. Howard yeah. uh, gets a new hat. <laughs> my uh, my brother was actually talking about how he was disappointed that there wasn't a new Moon Knight book. Yeah, I would have loved to see that. Oh yeah, yeah that would have been cool. There's um the other thing I found interesting is how they're kind of treating Peter Parker now. Like, how do you guys feel about that? Because uh, they're talking about that they're going to make him a basically an industrialist, whereas he's the head of Parker Industries, he's older, you know, his suit has more tech, and he has the not-so-well-received Spider-Mobile. I don't know if you guys have seen the pictures of that. <laughs> not all peop- not yeah. a lot of people are liking yeah. that. So how do you guys feel about how they're treating Peter Parker? Uh, they, they say he's going to be a mentor to Miles, so this kind of makes sense, puts him in that capacity. Being a mentor to Miles definitely sounds... Good. I feel like if you've ever seen the animated show, what is it, like, Spider-Man Web Warriors, I watched that for a little bit, and there's when he, he's basically, he, when he travels into the Ultimate Universe, and he meets Miles, he's, they're kind of, like, not the same age, but they're not, he's not totally older, he's still Peter Parker in the 616 universe, but he goes over to the Ultimate Universe, and he's not, like, some, like, they're trying to do him now, some rich, like, indu- yeah, like you were saying, um, I feel like if he was more still the same old Spider-Man and he was just in his normal routine, he added almost like a sidekick of sorts. And then much like we've seen with how, I guess you compare it to like how Robin became, like was Batman's sidekick and then he grew out of that into his own superhero, um, changing and evolving and stuff. And um, if it was more like that where he started kind of a sidekick and they worked together – instead of him being, like, some way higher class mentor, if they would have kind of kept it the same, but obviously changed some things, I feel like they're trying to do a little bit too much and almost move past Peter Parker. I don't know how how to say it other than, like, they're trying not to get rid of him, but they definitely, they're adding so many more characters that he's almost not being pushed out of the spotlight, but sort of, because they're trying to bring in new, like, a new, new... New blood, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Here's, here's the thing about that, because if you remember back in the 90s, there were at least, I want to say at least four or five different Spider-Man titles wow. being released at the same time. Like, you had the Amazing Spider-Man, the Spectacular Spider-Man, you have the Web of Spider-Man, all these titles coming out at once, and it was all at Spider-Man's peak popularity. So now you have a bunch of different Spider-Characters coming out. And to me, what this relationship feels like, now that uh, Peter Parker is going to be the head of Parker Industries, and he's going to be, you know, a, you know, kind of a... I guess you could say he's going to be rich. He kind of feels to me like the relationship he had with Tony Stark at one point. I was going to say Stark that, too. Um, I, didn't, I don't mean to cut you off, but I, that was one thing I left out. I was just going to say, he, yeah, he almost reminds me of, um, yeah, like how Iron Man was to, to the same kind of similar situation. There are so many rich superheroes that are almost like trying to take take old stuff from how their relationship was and just like redo it. Yeah, that's what, that's what I kind of find uh, liked about it. About yeah. the comic world, you got any thoughts about it? Oh no, no, I was just I'm I'm looking at the the covers for the new uh, issues that are going to be released. Yeah, and, and a lot have... of them, a lot of them look. Oh, sorry, a lot of them look interesting. And I was looking at Doctor Strange and the Vision. Those are I think because I I don't know about you guys, but like uh, Doctor Strange is like my one of my top ten. Uh, uh, favorite superheroes as well as the Vision, so that looks interesting. I have. I'm interested to see how. Um, what is it? Uh, what is this? What is the name of the uh, the new Wolverine? Is it Weapon? Oh, is it like X twenty three? X twenty three. 
Yeah. I was thinking 22 for some reason. But um, she looks cool. She has Wolverine's outfit, of course. Yeah, she, many, I was looking at that. that was yeah, and then Carnage. Carnage looks really cool. Like a tunnel going through his mouth. What about the main Avengers lineup? What do you guys think about that? Because it's uh, at the at the moment it's Iron Man, uh, female Thor, Jane Foster, Sam Wilson, Falcon. Uh, you got Kamala Khan, Miss Marvel. You have Vision. You have Miles Morales and Nova. Hmm. Those are the, those are your main stay Avengers right yeah, now. Yeah, those will, that'll be definitely cool. There's a lot more than usual, right? There's there's usually not as many. Yeah, well, you have your you have your Avengers, you have your Uncanny Avengers, your new Avengers team. The new Avengers team to me seemed like that was like the weakest one because, for one, it looks like they're more around centered around AIM, uh, advanced idea mechanics. But it looks like the lineup is Songbird, Hawkeye, Wiccan, Hulkling, and Squirrel Girl, and uh, Sunspot. So just with Squirrel Girl, you're like, huh? Oh, well, she know? took down Galactus. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but I'm just like, eh, you know, that looks to be like the weakest team. Um, yeah. As far as uh, the other, like the other Uncanny Avengers, like I, like I said earlier, that one has Spider-Man, Quicksilver, Brother Voodoo, Steve Rogers, Rogue, Human Torch, and Deadpool. Like that just seems a little more star-studded than you know the new yeah. Avengers. I can say one thing: there's going to be a lot more Spider-Man cosplay. Yeah. Like so much more. And one thing I was talking about, well, I was going to say earlier when we were talking about Captain America moving kind of towards a Nick Fury spot, is mm -hmm. um, we, I was watching this video, and I think I sent a link to Comic World when I was watching it, uh, about who who the, um, like the confusion between the how in the movies Nick Fury is black and in the comics he's white. Um, they were saying that how in he used to be, what is it, I think it was in the Ultimate Universe, he was black, and they, yep. it was well-received, so they put him into the main universe as, was it Nick Fury's son? Nick Fury Jr. Nick Fury Jr., yeah. yeah. Nick Fury Jr., and so they were saying, potentially, if um, Samuel L. Jackson decides to step down from that, uh, or dies in the movies, somehow, we could see it maybe being, it's revealed as he's actually Nick Fury's son, and, like, almost how in The Dark Knight, how they were like, you should use your full name Robin, like, you should use your full name Nick Fury Jr., um, and then we see a transition to the comic book version of uh, Nick Fury to kind of step in and take over. Honestly, um, that would like, be pretty interesting. In theory, that would work. I just, I just feel like in practice it wouldn't really pan out as well. And to tell you the reason why is that there's a lot of, uh, backlash going on right now between comic world and comic movies and stuff like that because of the whole diversity issue. So if you go and take a well-received, beloved character who is of a minority and out of nowhere you replace them with the white guy, like, there's going to be all kinds of uproar. And, you know, and then that would be cool. Like, I've honestly... Yeah, I don't think a lot of people understand, though, like, that's the original comic thing. I think yeah. people are naturally, you know, I guess I would say some people are naturally just racist and they feel like everything so if certain things I don't want to get into like a race topic here but if they if that would be taken then they would be like oh they're doing it because he's black or oh and and then but it's kind of similar how they brought they're bringing in new characters of minority like Miles Morales for example they're bringing in things so I feel like you could argue some people that are I guess I would say stupid and don't understand the comic part of how it would how it would make sense could be like, oh, it's because of race, um, but it could be really be because Samuel Jackson doesn't want to continue the being Nick Fury anymore, and they they really could have already done it. They could have done it in Winter Soldier where he really did he die, died yeah. and uh, maybe they go into the lab and there's some white guy standing there, and they're like, who are you? And this is like, this was my son, Nick Fury. That would have been like a whole plot twist, and that could have added so much more to the universe. But then I see your yeah. point on how people could be like, uh, why'd you kill him off? Because you wanted a white person instead? Is that why you did it? It's like, no, well, he didn't want to be in the movies anymore, or something like that. Yeah. Uh, but I, I definitely see your, your point. Speaking of diversity, though, uh, and now that we're t uh, going into the realm of these new comics, Totally Awesome Hulk number one. They're, the main speculation is that we're going to have an Asian Hulk because they're saying that the new Hulk will be Amadeus Cho. Hmm. Really? Interesting. So that's like the main I rumor. See, I could that's see how that rumor. happens. How do you guys feel about getting rid of uh, Bruce Banner, though? Because I know he's I a lot of I'm on the fence oh, about that, actually. 
I don't um, know. I love Bruce Banner. So. Yeah, he's awesome. He's definitely cool. And... Eh, I don't know. Somebody... I was watching a video. Some of the people were saying that it could be uh, Odin's son. Because <laughs> he lost his arm. And... Yeah. Some people were saying it could be Teen Hulk. Yeah, because yeah, cause <laughs> if you've seen the cover... It's like uh, his his hand is um bl- yeah, blacked out. Yeah, his hand's out blacked out as well. So something has to be going on with his hand. And yeah, that could be Odin's son. Like almost said, like. Yeah. If you notice though, if you notice the writers and the artists, uh, the writer is Greg Pak and uh, the artist is Frank Cho, both Asian. Oh. They might yeah. just write him in to be Amadeus Cho for the Asian aspect because there's not Did a lot of. Did he lose his arm though? No, it, it just might be blurring it out for an effect. I mean, they're just trying to mislead you sometimes. But that's like the main prevailing theory. Like, like supposedly there have been arm. leaks. Yeah, and supposedly there have been leaks that uh, it's going to be Amadeus Cho. Because according to what I've heard about this new Hulk, yeah. is that it's a Hulk that enjoys being the Hulk. Hmm. And there's a lot of repercussions behind that. Because obviously Bruce Banner was always one that was cautious about, about being the Hulk. Because like, I don't want to hurt anybody. This guy's just coming in like, yeah, and just comes in and smash stuff. You know, like he doesn't care. He likes being uh, the Hulk. I think hmm. you're right. I just looked up an, a piece of information, and it looks like, um, yeah, it looks like a picture of him writing all the way on a, what is it, like a moped with Hulk in the background. Yeah. 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 I, I guess I could see it. Um, it could definitely, definitely work. And yeah, how Harry's saying, he almost, I think somebody was saying he almost is, Im, he's not, Im, he's kind of immature as the Hulk. But yeah, and I mean, being a teen, it makes so yeah, it makes some sort of sense. I think it'd be cool to see Odin's son though, because you know he used to be Thor and now he's Hulk, and all the, the fights between Thor and Hulk. That's one question yeah. that I had raised about that because there was no mention of Odin's son anywhere. In any yeah, well, book. he's he's not Thor anymore. Yeah, he, he's not Thor, he's but out of the, the, he's out of the way. But even then, when he's not Thor, there is still uh, he was still Odin's son. He still carried Yarnbjorn, but. <laughs> There's no mention of him in the comics. He's in no lineup. He's in no book. Nothing of the sort. Yeah, so I want to know. I want to know if he'll even exist in that continuity, as Thor, or if their Marvel's just moving forward, making a new continuity where the main Thor has always been female. Because you got to think yeah. about it. it's a new starting point. So if their new starting point going forward, like if we think about this down the line, like maybe 30 years from now when new kids are running, like oh Thor's a woman. Like we, I remember back when Thor was a man. You know? Yeah. Yes. So Definitely. it's very, it's very well possible that they just wrote Odin's son out. Yeah. You know, with all this, because um, Hyperion's in in the Squadron Supreme book. And oh, if you, yeah, I can't, I can't, I'm excited for that one. So and that's with um, all this new comics, um, they can definitely do some more. They could totally skip over things into the movies. We are way past the timeline, by the way. Yeah. But uh, that's all right. Um, this is a big topic. Um, they could definitely do a lot with things like this in movies because we were wondering like what what they're going to do and uh, there's definitely and things like this they could do a Spider-Gwen movie I would love for a Spider-Gwen movie that would be awesome bring uh and you know what they could do since she since she's since uh Gwen's from an alternate universe they could bring uh what is it, Emma Stone back as Gwen because she's from an alternate universe where she didn't die so they could just be yeah. like oh you're you're in this universe now yeah, I think after Amazing Spider-Man 2, unfortunately, she was like, oh, I want to stay away from the superhero genre. I think she sucks. Like, she would have been good comment about that. Again. Yeah, she would have been good as Gwen. Anyways, yeah. I think we should try to move on to the next yeah. one now. <laughs> Unless, yeah, Scott, anything else? Anything no, going well, on? We could, we could talk about this for hours, but... Yeah. I mean, this is the wrong uh, Alrighty, so Marvel TV shows colliding with the movies. Uh, there's been what's uh, an interview with was it Kevin Feige that he says once the TV shows get bigger, um, I think it was that they're going to start colliding with the the movies, and we've seen this kind of already with um, how Agents of Shield is preparing for Inhumans. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, that Daredevil too somewhat, but um, which I still haven't finished Daredevil actually. Oh man, and, yeah, <laughs> oh like my two god. Episodes in. <laughs> It's amazing. Yeah, you need to finish that. That's like your homework, man. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's that's the thing when I read about Feige doing that as well when he was talking about the uh, universes overall. 
is that the comics uh, the comics have been shaping the movies. The movies have been shaping the TV shows, but now they're talking about the TV show shaping the movies as well. Like, I saw a point where it affects it. Just like you said about uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, bringing in the Inhumans before the movie comes out, they're definitely shaping it. And as you saw already in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 3, they already confirmed to be about Secret Warriors. So I don't know if you guys yeah. ever read Nick Fury's Secret Warriors, but I think it'll be interesting to see. I've seen one episode of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., and I don't even think I saw it all the way through. Yeah. I did not like it. I don't know why. I watched the first episode. I thought it was boring. Yeah, I, I, I give you that because that's the problem that a lot of people have with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., and that's a characteristic of almost any Joss Whedon show. The first season is slow. It's slow and it drags. But think about it this way, going into the Marvel perspective. It's what um, the actor who plays Coulson, uh, Clark Gregg, was saying, was that you're getting greenlit to do a S.H.I.E.L.D. show. But Marvel also tells you, in a few months, like halfway through your season, we're going to do Captain America's... Um, Winter Soldier, and S.H.I.E.L.D. is going to fall. So everything your show is built on is going to die. And they're How like, is hey. Coulson back, by the way? Or is that something that's going to spoil it? Yeah, that yeah. would be something spoiler-ish. Like, you need to actually see that scene. It's a very powerful scene when they actually explain how he's back and why he's back. Okay. So, is that in the first season, or do we need to watch like, it's, a whole it's, bunch? It's in the first season, but it, like if, if I were to you, I would just kind of skip like the first several episodes, just go to like the back end of the first season, because yeah. that's when it starts getting good. Like back end of the first season gets really good because it starts catching up with the Captain America Winter Soldier stuff. Like you start seeing all the Hydra influences within Shield from a perspective you couldn't see from the movies, and then everything kind of blows out at the end. But season two was a completely different story. Season two blew it out of the water completely. And it looks like it's just leading up to season three making a lot better. And I just rewatched the finale about two nights ago and still blew me away. Yeah, what if, I, I have to agree with um with Nerd Hype on that one. Like, what if? Season, oh, go ahead. oh, sorry. The first season is like it's like meh, you know. But the second season, that's when things start to get serious and they, it starts to get really good. So I, just just like watch the last few episodes of season one. Yeah. What if um. Instead of making a movie about Secret Wars, they made a show about Secret Wars. Because I find the problem that they have with a lot of, like, the movies sometimes are they can't fit it all into, like, a two-hour, and they don't want to go, like, super long. Um, If they made a show, like, even if it was, like, a two-season, like, short kind of show, um, where, like, they made the first season was, what is it? The lead up to uh the lead up to Secret Wars, and then like they made a whole season just about the Secret Wars. So that way they're not limited. They can make like hour episodes, like because a lot of shows do that. They could have like, cause and that way that way it's a show, and you don't have to have like a twenty four hour movie. <laughs> yeah. And and you can have because that would almost be interesting. And then they could have maybe not necessarily the same actors as in the movies, but it would help. <laughs> and that way. The actors get paid more money, and we, as the fans, get to see something interesting like that um, come into come into play. That'd be really yeah. interesting. I feel like that would be better than a movie. Yeah, and um, that's the thing that Agents of Shield is really excelling at is um, they're kind of gluing everything together. They're piecing everything together from the movies, so it's kind of like if you're a Marvel fan, you get the full experience from watching the movies and watching Agents of Shield. I believe there's somewhere on the internet there's even this like list of uh, what you should watch in chronological order, and it's like Captain America: The First Avenger and blah blah blah, and episodes this through this of Agents of Shield, and you watch a movie, then episodes this through this of Agents of Shield, so you get all the story. It's pretty cool when you uh, put it in practice, and um, I think the Netflix shows are only going to make it even better, like, filling in more of those gaps. What are, they, like, uh, what are all the shows now? There's... I remember when the... Va- I stayed up till, like, midnight when Daredevil came out. I thought I was gonna be, like, super hyped for it, and I just haven't caught up on it. Um, I stayed up, and, and when it first came out on Netflix, um, I searched for Netflix, and it had the related titles, and I don't know if they meant for this to happen, but when you looked in the related titles, they had all the future shows. They had Luke Cage, uh... Jessica Jones and Iron Fist, and then yeah. The Defenders. Yeah, 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 they had that, and I was like, I don't know if they meant to do that, but it's there, and uh, then they have The Punisher. Do they add any more shows to that? 
No, the Punisher's not getting his own show. He's just going to show up in season two of Daredevil, uh, which is which is something that I fast track because there was like no intention to give Daredevil a second season, but yeah. due to how good it was and how well received it was, they kind of fast tracked the sequel. The season two come out. Yep. Uh, next year. Next year. Uh, and essentially, the TV shows right now are kind of like tie-ins in a big event. Um, in in comics, that's that's what like the TV like Agents of Shield is right now, which is pretty cool because you get the full experience. It yeah. is. Um, I'll go ahead. I'm, I need to rethink what I was about to say. <laughs> no, and uh, I was gonna say because if you've watched the first two episodes of Daredevil, then you already know how it ties into the MCU, yep. where Hell's Kitchen is all you know messed up okay. because of the battle in New York. So everyone's like making. They're kind of taking advantage of the situation and doing all their behind-the-scenes crimes because of the disarray the Hell's Kitchen is in. Yeah. So that's yeah. a that's a neat little tie-in. They even have a, a reference to in uh, later episodes when uh, Ben Yerrick is looking through the through, ah, his, ah. through his newspapers. Um, they even reference the Hulk, the Hulk battle with Abomination. Oh yeah. I thought you were gonna spoil something. <laughs> no, no, he's just looking through newspapers and it's like, oh, there's the Hulk and Abomination like fighting in that's Harlem. That's interesting. If yeah. Red Hulk, I'm gonna say it again. If Red Hulk isn't in um, Civil War, I'm gonna cry. I'm gonna straight cry in front of the movie theater so. and start yelling at the screen. I'll probably get kicked out, but only. So if 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 we're on Comic Talk one day and you guys ask me how Civil War was and I say I didn't get to finish it, then you'll know why. Because <laughs> <laughs> I really think no. that would just add so much for Marvel. Not only as the fans, it would help the fans, but it would help Marvel as like. No, the studio it would be like that. I'd love it gives them more stuff, and they can't do a movie about Hulk. They were saying they can't do a movie about Hulk, but they could do a movie about Hulk and Red Hulk, and potentially add in She Hulk and make a Hulk verse movie. That's about something they could A-Mom. do. Yeah, they could have a movie about multiple Hulks, not just Hulk smashing. Be like Hulk beating other people, other Hulks up, and trying to do. That's that's Hulk the thing stuff. about the Hulk in the MCU is that he's just been relegated to. A punching machine. That's all he does. There's nothing really for him to yeah, do. He's like a he'll really smash interesting a character in the comics. He'll smash into a couple tanks. Like you know, he'll fight the Hulkbuster. That's all cool. That's all awesome. But I mean, you really didn't get to see him fight someone really equal until you saw him fight Abomination in the Ed- Edward Norton movie or whatever. And so, who else are you gonna bring in? Because Abomination still sitting in the background. They can bring back Abomination whenever yeah. they want. Did he die? I forget what happened no. at that. No, Shield has him in custody. I think that they referenced that in Agents of Shield one time. Um, uh, what was I gonna say? Um, couldn't they? Damn it. Oh yeah. Um, Hulk, 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 Hulk. I'm forgetting. Damn it! I forget everything important. I'm gonna say. <laughs> is anybody else wondering where Betty Ross is? Yeah, like uh, that's I mean, like, they might reference that in Civil War now that Thunderbolt Ross is gonna be in it. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm, I'm hoping she comes back. I As a different say. character though. I mean, yeah. uh, actor. That would be cool. I wouldn't mind seeing that. Even though Hulk and Black Widow have their thing going on right now. Yeah, but... I know it's weird, but whatever. <laughs> um, well, yeah, yeah, I remember. Do you, you know? Go. Do you guys remember? Uh, was it like Big Suit Hulk when he went to Las Vegas and had a tailor make a bunch of suits for him, and then he became <laughs> like a mob boss? Yeah, yeah. I and remember that's that. when he became uh, became gray again. Yeah. Um, under wasn't it under the Joe Fix It name that he did that or whatever? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, was, I remember that. It was super funny. Yeah, that was pretty funny. I like that. Yeah, they've done some interesting things with Hulk. It's just yeah, like you can do stuff with him, but in the movies, they're not using the Hulk as you can fully use the Hulk. Yeah, yeah. That's a problem. Is that only putting him in Avengers pieces that you can't really explore him? If he had his own movie, then I bet you can do more. But um. I don't know. I'm, I I don't know how I'd say if I... Because the, the problem with the Hulk movies is that the first one, the first one left such a bad taste in people's mouth. Oh, Ang yeah. Lee's little thing piece about a which green one? rage monster. The first, first one. Hulk? Not, uh, not, not the MCU one. The the Hulk. Not the Incredible Hulk. The Hulk. The one with the, like the old school one that had the with really it? bad looking Thor in it? No, no, no. no, no, no. Are, the, are you talking that, about... Oh, that Hulk. That Hulk. Oh, the I know Eric Banner about. one. The Eric Banner one. the original one. original Hulk. Yeah, that like one. 19- no, no, no. That one left a, such a bad taste oh, in yeah. people's mouths. It was my it was yeah. one of my favorite movies as a kid because I like the scene when he's running in the desert and like destroying tanks and shit with missiles. But yeah, 
But yeah, the movie overall was bad, especially the transition scenes where they'd have like they tried to integrate comics, so they'd have like one picture in it and they oh, like transition. No. Do you remember that? That was so yeah. bad. Yeah, that was just bad. It, yeah, it, it, that kind of messed it up for Hulk. The thing was is they they were trying to make them. Um, they try to make the movie a think piece. Like, they may try to make it yeah. deep. It's the Hulk. Like, it's, it's not, it doesn't work out that way. Like, you won't... I, if, I, I if, kind of have to disagree on that. Because the relationship that we see between Hulk and him having to struggle with... Or Bruce Banner having to struggle with being the Hulk and then at some points having his relationship struggling, that can be... That can kind of have feeling and emotion it, to it. But then... It, it can be, but it has yeah. to be super balanced, though, because you also want to see the yeah. Hulk beat up someone that's like the Hulk. That's why that's the yeah. Abomination fight was cool because they were on the same level. Then you get some like real heavy hitting stuff. Like you gotta balance it out. Like you can you can do the whole struggle between the Hulk and I think the Avengers movies have done that better than anything. They have the struggle with uh, Mark Ruffalo pulling out the Bruce Banner struggles about being the Hulk. In just these little short scenes. I think they've cemented that. And I think that's yeah. perfect. But we want to see the Hulk punch stuff too. Like, don't I'm, I don't want to just see them like, oh, contemplating. I'm gonna look in a river and I'm like, oh, it sucks being the Hulk. No, we want to see him punch some stuff. Definitely. Is Abomination and A Bomb the same person? I didn't think. Are they? No. I no. didn't think so. Yeah. No. I didn't think so. I was talking you know to somebody and they tried to tell me that. I was like, I don't think. I don't think that's right. Sidebar two. Uh, Agents of Shield season two introduced Absorbing Man. So I'd love oh. to see Hulk versus Absorbing Man. Yeah. Absorbing Man. Who was he? One thing that they didn't do in the movies. That they did, or with uh, Abomination, he's like, mm -hmm. he's like a green dude with. They didn't do the ears. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. They didn't do the ears. It's like one of the things that he's awesome for is his crazy reptile, f like wing ears. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's cool. super cool. They just had a flat head. They did the rest of his body all right, but you need his ears. Come on. One more, what one more thing thinking? about the. Uh... Yeah, yeah. I mean, I wish he would have had the little fish ears, like the. He looks like kind of like a sea monster. That's how I've always looked at him with those ears. Like they look yeah. like fins to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the texturing looks good on in, in the movie though. Just do the ears. <laughs> they yeah. didn't even like try. They they actually made indents in his head instead of ears. Yeah. You're supposed to go out, not in. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing too about uh, these movies and TV shows. Things is that uh, depending on the success, Marvel will fast track a sequel. Like, Daredevil was so good that it's married to the sequel immediately next year. Like, we were freaking out because we are like, oh my god, we're probably not going to get Daredevil sequel yeah, until after the Defenders. We're like, oh my god. And then Marvel's like, nah. You get it in 2016. You get it next year. So we're like, hell yeah. And it looks like they're doing the same thing with the movies. I believe Kevin Feige was discussing how if... Um, how de how de it depends on how Ant-Man is received, how yeah. the movie does, that they will fast-track a sequel. Before Infinity War, so they will uh, they will squeeze in another movie. No, if you have time to squeeze in another movie, then you have time to squeeze in more Civil a War. different movie. Exactly, more Civil War. Put in a different movie, dude. Put in like, yeah, if you're gonna if you're gonna squeeze in an extra movie, put in an extra Civil War movie, or put in an extra uh, World War Hulk movie. I don't know. I'm feeling Hulk today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'd love to see another Civil War movie because I, I, I can't imagine how they're going to do Civil War in one take. I'm exactly. personally really stoked for Ant-Man. Like, I really want to see it. I can't wait to see it. Yeah, I was like, looking at clips out on it now. Yeah, I'd love to see Ant-Man, and I'm going to. Like, I already have my tickets bought and everything. Uh, yeah, I, I kind of like, you know, managing my way that way. But anyways, um, July 17th, so... Oh, my God. That, I think that's the day I leave the, the not country, the state. Oh, it's the wow. day I leave to go to, what is it, Missouri. Wow, oh. awesome. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be doing a review on the movie like ASAP as soon as I come home from watching it. Oh, watch but, it. Uh, don't spoil anything, though. Yeah, we're not going to make one with spoilers. Yeah. Like, the spoilery one we'll will come two. out like a couple weeks yeah. later, yeah. But um, I'm stoked to see it. James Gunn absolutely loved it. I don't know if you saw it on Facebook. Like, he gave it like a rave review. He's like, this movie's awesome. It's my favorite movie since the first Iron Man. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, that's pretty cool because out of all the Marvel directors, James Gunn is the more abstract one. Like, he's the one who's doing the Guardians of the Galaxy, the Cosmic mm -hmm. side. So him giving it a seal of approval kind of gives me a little bit more confidence that it is pretty yeah. good. So, see yeah, how that goes. definitely. It looks pretty good. So, yeah. Maybe we should move on to the next topic. Right. I think we're going over again. <laughs> yeah. I started walking in the other room for something, and then I totally realized I was on the podcast. I don't know why. 
Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So the Guardians of the Galaxy two is revealed the sequel. It's a uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume two. I, th- I think that's kind of funny. Fitting. Yeah, that, that's fitting for the style of movie that it is. Yeah. It's definitely fitting. Yeah, I like it. I, I think it's refreshing because it's the awesome mix volume two. It's Guardians of the yeah. Galaxy volume yeah. two. Yeah. So I can dig it. I can dig it. Now, uh, talking about the sequel, what is like the number one thing you guys would like to see? In Not a more luck. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's a thing. <laughs> yeah, I definitely really. wouldn't mind. Definitely wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind them introducing Nova, but James Gunn is pretty adamant against using Nova. Just why? His reason is he doesn't like the helmet. Well, what? Screw you <laughs> that. Then make a new helmet. Yeah. You have the Nova Core. You can't just do that. You can't like. That's like saying we're gonna put Hulk in the movie, but I don't like his color, so we're gonna make him indigo. Yeah, eventually they're going <laughs> to have to It's like a trademark, Nova. like a trait. Because yeah. it's, it's James Gunn's preference not to do Nova, but at one point Marvel's going to be like, hey, you got to do Nova. Yeah, you got to yeah, do, do Nova. You got to do Nova. Yeah, definitely. Because Nova's, Nova's a pretty cool character, and especially I feel like they're kind of bringing, they're bringing the, the Nova movies or Nova characters. They have, like we were going back earlier, we're not going to get too wrapped up in this, but they have... They have, um, I think it's a Nova uh, comic new issue kind of thing coming out. Oh, yeah. 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 And yeah. So, yeah, the it's Nova. Nova number one. Um, the family business. So they could they could do something like that. Yeah, I'm assuming it's, uh, it's still the Sam Alexander Nova with his father. Um, if we were yeah, to I see Nova in the MCU, I'd rather see Richard Ryder. Yep, Richard Ryder. Yeah. Not a lot of people well. like Sam Alexander's run. Like I, his Nino book was just awful. Like <laughs> that book was horrible. So people were so glad that it ended. <laughs> <laughs> I never read it, but I read enough reviews where people were just like, "Damn, this book is garbo." So they didn't even want it. Yeah, I see what you. Yeah, yeah. There's there. Yeah, if they do do Nova, I feel like they'll they'll do it justice. Hopefully. I'd like to see Nova in a Guardians 3. Uh, let me explain why. Because if they did a Guardians 3, yeah, then they can, do, they can do Annihilation Conquest. Yeah. Um, yes. No, I, think, I think they can't do that because... Uh, doesn't Fox own the rights to An- Annihilation? Does it do uh, that? Annihilus? I don't know. Um, it might be. But how, I heard how, something like that, but they, yeah. they might learn. Uh, I think they do. Uh, they might do it, but they could do a version of it where they just replace the, uh, they replace the villain, and they could just make it like Thanos, or they could make it literally yeah. anyone else in the cosmic yeah, side. Cool. So, um, yeah. what about the Thanos imperative? Like, imagine that. Like, if it has Thanos, I'll see it. <laughs> you know, something of that. Something of that magnitude. I'd like to see that, like a Guardians Nova. You know, et cetera, et cetera, team up like that'd be really cool to see, and like against a really big villain. Because if it's like a Guardians three, if it's the end of the sequels, you know, it's gonna have to be some watcher. You know, it'd be cool if they made um Infinity and um the 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 comic event that was just recently with the builders. Mm-hmm. That'd be cool because that was such that was a huge event too as well. And wait, Where's did they team up? Did they team up with it. the Guardians? What's up? Uh, go ahead. I was talking to myself. Oh. oh, did they team up with the Guardians of the Galaxy in that event? I cannot remember. In Infinity, I'm, I, you know, and that's the thing because I've been wanting to buy that that uh trade yeah, paperback. Yeah, I see it too. It's pretty good. They, I've been wanting to buy that trade paperback, but it's so damn expensive everywhere. Like oh, yeah. I was, I was looking up in Amazon, and like the cheapest it gets is like fifty bucks, and I'm like, the damn. The big thick one. Yeah. Yeah, they have that at the comic store near me. Um, which I tried to get a job at, by the way. The stupidest thing. I don't want to like change the subject, but. So at the comic book store, they obviously have like they have certain books that are like anime kind of thing that have nudity in them because people are just like yeah. that, and it's a it's like it's a it's a cool store, and so they have like a variety of everything. So they, I told them because I'm once I in California, you can be you can get you can work at places when you're 14, and so um, when I'm turned 15, I, and I'm able to like because then all you have to do is. Ugh, get a permit from your high school and get it all worked out with like the owner and all that, and um, right. you can get a job there. So I told him I was like, "Hey man, it's like all these laws." I was telling him, um, like, "Cause like I we used to go there like every day, 
I was like the one of the store people that worked there. I was like, hey, so if I want to get a job here, like I explained it to him. He's like, well, that probably wouldn't work because we sell pornography here. I was like, uh, <laughs> where? And I, he's like, oh, it's over there behind the, all those boxes in, in that shelf. It's like I, no one can even see that. He's like, yeah, some people will randomly come in and ask for it, and then we we see it. Because they used to have <laughs> pornographic images like hanging up on the wall. And then some mom came in and was like, hey, you should take that down. There's kids in here. This is a comic book store. I don't That's want, awful. I don't want awful. boobs and Spider-Man <laughs> in the same vicinity. <laughs> and so, yeah, they're all like hidden now. I'm like, dude, if there's usually like two people working here, if somebody wants to sell it, can't I just be like talk to them? Because <laughs> there's usually like two people working there. And I was like, you. it's not like yeah. you close at crazy times. You close at like 8 o'clock. And so that's it'd be I think it's like in the legal legal limit or whatever. But I was just like, cause cause they get like they get to read all the comics that they want there before, you know, they they can sell them still because it's not like a game where you play it and you mess it. That's like a book that you open up and most people probably open up the books like even customers. But and so and the dude that works there is super passive aggressive. Like he he talks to you. I was when I wanted to get World War Hulk. Um, I went in there before I knew, like, everything about comics. I went in there, I was like, well, not everything, but before I knew everything about, like, certain com certain comics, like World War Hulk and stuff, I was like, hey, do you have World War Hulk? He's like, no. They stopped making that, like, years ago. Or they stopped um, sending us copies of that, like, years ago. Didn't you know? Like, uh, no, I did not know. And he's like, he just starts getting this attitude. It's like the dude's the most passive-aggressive guy ever. But I don't even remember what we were talking about. Oh, I was saying I want to see a watch through the watcher. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that'd be interesting. Yeah. They could, the that water. could be something yeah, they could do for Infinity War. Yeah. They're like, hey, there's about to be some event that's going to happen, so I'm here. Unfortunately, so, unfortunately about that, the Watcher is owned by Fox. Yeah, oh, that's what I thought, because sure. it's, it's, uh, yes. it's a Fantastic Four <laughs> property, I guess. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the, the deal with the Fantastic Four is that, they, that Fox kind of bought them with the, the bunch of perks. So they're yeah. like, throw in Kane the Conqueror, throw in uh -huh. Uatu the Watcher, throw in the Silver Surfer, throw in all these, uh -huh. and they got all that. If, if we don't get Silver Surfer in Infinity War, I'm going to be pissed, because he's like a very important person. We have him and Doctor oh, coming that's... into Doctor Strange. Is like maybe Yeah, more... we're not getting him at all, because no. he's, he's, he's in the Fox. And I hate that, because I love the Silver Surfer. He's one of my top ten favorite heroes. Um, um, unless, unless Fantastic Four Unless they do a Sony kind of deal, where they just... Yeah, so that's Fantastic Four bomb. So, um, oh, wait, well, I, I low think key, it'll bomb. just hush, hush, everyone that's listening, don't see this movie. Oh, yeah. Let it go back to Marvel. <laughs> don't see it. I'm probably gonna see it. <laughs> I'll probably see it just to slam it, honestly. Yeah, I'll probably I, see I, I it don't, just because they're making Doom a computer hacker. That's what I hate. I I love Doom. Doom's Doom like my, is one amazing. of my favorite characters, and my yeah, God, how are they gonna make him a computer hacker? Let me. <laughs> He's not like, even a hacker. Not even a hacker. He's a, a pissed off blogger. Oh yeah, <laughs> blogger. I'm sorry. Yeah, blogger. He's a pissed off blogger. Like, yeah. He, he's like, I'm gonna go on Tumblr and write about Reed Richards. Like, really? <laughs> like, screw so, that guy. Yeah, and they're probably not even gonna do the face thing because he's like some perfect actor looking like model guy, and uh, in the comics, Doctor Doom wasn't like super duper attractive. No, he wasn't like. And I'm not saying the dude's attractive. I'm just saying like uh, he's like a mo he's like an actor, and most actors are you don't see ugly actors um, unless they're old usually. But mm -hmm. even Stanley, Stanley is not ugly. But <laughs> um, I was just actually watching an article, and he has like no hearing. Like somebody had to explain the uh, which is sad because he's getting old. But somebody had to like explain the question to him like five times. Yeah, uh, I watched. I watched the him on the. Um... The Ant Man premiere. Yeah, that's what, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah. I explain it to him. And so, so yeah, so he's probably not going to be able to pull off one scar being freaked out about it. Or maybe he will because he's an actor and actors like to be perfect. Maybe he will be able to pull off the I don't want a scar on my face because I'm perfect. Because that was one of the, his whole driving methods was I for his like suit and everything was I have this scar that I think is a million scars. So let me put on this scalding hot mask and actually mess up my face. Yeah, that was always the huge debate between uh, Doom fans and anyone that, you know, even wrote or drew Doctor Doom or hell, even manufactured a toy for Doctor Doom. They couldn't decide if his whole face was mangled or if it just was that one scar, one small they, scar. They have an answer to that. Yeah, yeah, they have an answer to it now, but that was always a debate. It was, But if you see the... Um, have you read Secret Wars number three? 
They took um, off his mask, and his face is completely, oh, yeah. like, it looks nasty. Well, that's because, that yeah, because originally the picture that, I forget yeah. who, who his thing was, it had the one scar. And then when he put on the mask, since it wasn't it cool enough, more, then yeah. it messed up his face. So, yeah, technically I think be- now his face is messed up, but originally it wasn't. He That was a product of his own The thing about that, failure. though, is that the the whole thing with the mask, the, the monks putting on the mask when it was too hot, that wasn't until the retelling of his origin story. In his original origin story, he uh, we didn't know what it was. He didn't put on the mask too hot. He just made the armor, and then he put on the mask to cover it, but it wasn't made too hot. Then it made his face even worse. In the retelling of his origin, which came down, like uh, I want to say, at least a, like five to tw- five years to a decade later, then they retold the story where he put on the mask too hot and it mangled his face. But originally, when we're talking about the original concept of Doom, it was always debated on whether it was just the one scar, the one small scar, or if his face was completely mangled. Because there was a couple of of comic series where they showed him like kind of taking off his mask off panel, and then people would be like, "Oh my god, that's like the worst face I've ever seen. It's disgusting. It's horrible." So it was always highly debated. It mostly, yeah. it mostly landed on who was drawing him and who was writing him at the time. But in Secret Wars, they finally, I guess they're going by that, because his face is, like, completely mangled. It looks nasty, like his nose is falling off and everything. There, I'll, I'll look it up. It's, it's nasty. <laughs> yeah, I need to read Secret Wars. So. Oh, yeah, it's... it's, it's I, I, I just got number four today, and I'm, I still haven't read it yet, but I'm looking you, forward to reading you live, it. Do you live near a comic book store, or do you go to, like, online, or... Oh, I sometimes go to a comic store, but, like, today I didn't have a chance to because I was running errands, so uh, uh, I have the uh, Marvel Comics app. So you just buy yeah. the comic and yeah, come yeah, out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Why does he have a white mask? Uh, he's in a white hood because he's God. He's oh, a God about yeah, He's sense. a God about a world, so. Ew. Yeah, that's pretty bad. How did his teeth fall out, though? The mask didn't mess up his teeth, did it? Maybe it just eroded so badly that Ew. everything oh, fell God. out. What do you think about the... I guess this is something we probably could have talked about a while ago, but the new... Uh, uh, new Reed Richards. What is it? He's what's his name now? Master. The maker in uh, the maker. from from the Ultimate Universe. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I like I him a lot better. I haven't really because I don't like. I'm not a Reed Richards fan. As a Doom fan, I automatically hate Reed Richards. <laughs> so uh, I well, never. This one's really evil as well. So. Yeah, he's evil as well. But I never really paid attention to the Ultimate Universe. Anyways, like I was more of a main continuity reader. Yeah. So I never really bothered reading the Ultimates, which I probably will go back eventually and read, but I just never really got into it. Yeah. Like when the when the Ultimate Universe came around is when I was kind of on a hiatus from comics, because I, I I had just gone through a slew of bad comics from the '90s and you know everything like that. So I was just like, eh, I'm kind of over this for now. So I got into like other forms, like like gaming and like anime and manga, I started watching that, and I kind of left comics alone for a good while. It wasn't until like the MCU started coming around that made me like find out comics again. So I'm like, I'm going to pick up comics and catch up on everything I left off, and boy, did I do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Alrighty. You guys got anything else you want to say? No, that's it. No. Yeah, that's Excited it. for Guardians too. Let's go. Alrighty. Um, more Guardian stuff. Yeah. Peter, or Star, Peter Quill, the girl? Is it... Yeah, what's the, what's the, the new Peter? comics. Oh, and Space Venom. Yeah. And is what what would what be the female name for Peter? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know because uh, I don't know if it's Peter Quill per se because it is in the comics of uh, those new comics that we were talking about earlier in the Guardians of the Galaxy line. It does show a female Star Lord, but I don't know if it's Peter Quill because Star Lord also has his own comic line. Maybe it's <laughs> Ultimate Universe. Star-Lord? I don't know. Maybe it's what if it's Kitty Pride? Mm, that could have done. Oh, yeah, I mean, he does. Quill. That would be the girl name, Petra Quill. Yeah, like what if it? What if it was Kitty Pride? You know, you know. Ooh, that would be the... interesting. Wait, but she doesn't. Kitty have black hair. Uh, I'm not sure. Like it could be that, or what if it's like Sue Storm or something? Because the thing is part oh, of the Guardians. That's true. Oh, yeah, that's true. Because in the, I remember, like, I'm not really so huge on the cosmic side of Marvel, but last I remember of Star-Lord, he was actually the leader of the Spartax now because uh, he had usurped his father, kicked him out of the throne, so he was a leader. See, that's why he was the actual given Star-Lord. He was the leader of the Spartax now, and that's why he had left the Guardians for a while and had his own line. 
Wait, I don't so think maybe. Oh wait, never mind. So I don't know. It, it just could be a uh, someone else taking up the mantle of Star Lord. Might be maybe he has a sister or something that we don't know about. I don't know. I was well, watching. Tell. I was just watching. Maybe it's his mom. Maybe she came back. Meredith Quill. It might be. Shoot. I was just looking at something about the Avengers: Age of Ultron. Totally off topic. We're gonna get back to this, but Captain America killed somebody with a lightsaber. It looks like. <laughs> In the, the Age of Ultron comics, yeah. It's totally a lightsaber. It has a handle and a red laser beam coming out of it. Yeah, it's totally a lightsaber. It looks to be glass, though. Like a heated piece or something. Yeah. yeah. But uh, anyway, carry on. Um, yeah, no, yeah, that could be that could be an option, too. And actually, Peter Quill, actually, or Star-Lord, appears in uh, Infinity Gauntlet issue, too. At like, the very end of the book, he appears in there. So yeah. well, I don't know, that might be a different Peter Quill... From a different universe or something, I don't know. No, it's 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 been the same Peter Quill, but uh, back in like I believe it was two thousand five, uh, Abnett and Lanning rebooted the Guardians of the Galaxy, so to the ones we know them now, which is a great book by the way. If you haven't read that uh, that run of Guardians, it's like the definitive it's Guardians. It's a Guardians of the Galaxy by Abnett and Lanning. So it's a really good cosmic book if you guys want to get into like the cosmic side. It's like where the the new team like Rocket, Groot, Drax, yeah. Gamora, Star Lord, they're all that's when they first formed to become the Guardians, and it's a really good book. Um that started in two thousand five because there was a different team I'm sure you guys are aware there was a different team of Guardians of the Galaxy, yeah. which was like Completely Yondu different. and a couple others. You know, and they, they brought that back for a uh, storyline, I think it was in the Guardians oh, three thousand. Oh no, I don't know. But isn't isn't uh, the Guardians uh, in the new show Car- Cor- Corvac? I think it's called. I forget what it's called. But yeah, there was a there was a, there was a Cor- that was a Corvac saga. That was a book line too as well with Michael Corvac. Yeah. yeah, he's a he's a pretty bad villain too. So I'd be I'd be interested to see if they bring it Michael Corvac for a Guardians movie. That'd be awesome. Oh yeah. There was an Iron Man and Black Widow sex tape. What? <laughs> I don't know why. I just I just gravitated toward this article. And it was just like I was it because I was looking at one of the, the the links, and that was just like on one of the sidebars. That's crazy, yeah. But uh, yeah, there's definitely a lot. Oh, there's definitely a, there's definitely a lot um, a lot of things that they could they could do. And as far as Venom being in the Guardians yeah, of the Galaxy, Venom. he's been he's been a part of the Guardians yeah, for a while. Agent now. Venom. Has Agent to, Venom. Uh, that's kind of weird. Uh, wait, does anyone? Like, can you guys tell me how he became a Guardian? Um, Isn't he yeah. supposed to be like bad? No, oh, Agent well, Venom. Agent Venom. Uh, he he became Agent Agent Venom when was it Flash Thompson was joined the military and got his legs blown off or something. Yeah. And then they went. They the, the symbiote was captured, and they figured out. They figured that they would test it on uh, Flash Thompson because he wanted to continue like helping, but he didn't have legs to do it. So basically, be another they, super they soldier. It's so to say. Yeah. Wait, so uh, does this Agent Venom, um, Agent Venom, isn't the same as like the other Venom? No, it, the no. other Venom. Oh. I mean, there's, there's oh. been other Venoms. There was Eddie this Brock, and then there was, uh, yeah, this Venom. And then like there was, I think. I mean, I think the Scorpion was Venom for a while as well. So it might, it might or might not be Eddie Brock. Uh, no, not Eddie Brock. Uh, Flash Thompson. But um, what was I gonna say? I think the Agent Venom had the best. Like the closest bond between Symbiote and Host, I think. I think they really truly bonded. I don't know besides like Carnage or something because like Carnage completely accepted it. But I think Agent Venom and Flash Thompson had like a really good bond, so that's why like he can control the Symbiote without getting too much trouble or having any kind of sinister thoughts and stuff like that. Something or some other. Yeah, and so this, but this Venom doesn't look like necessarily the other ones because his mouth is like open and he he just looks different. He doesn't look like um, the the Agent Venom. Because Agent Venom looks like more of a tighter, covert black suit with, like, he has the guns. And this just looks more like old-school Venom, but tamer and more different art style. It, it might just be the artist rendition because, I mean, even Groot looks a little different. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, but there's a certain thing that with Agent Venom, we, he has, like, his utility belt and all that. And... He just his. I think he has like just the the gear he's kind of wearing and. Yeah, I don't think it's it Asian is, Venom. It's just Venom, uh, because uh, the list down the lineup for the comic book cover just lists him as Venom, not Asian Venom. So I think it's oh, just straight up Venom. Oh. Uh, what's 
Flash is Flash Thompson's name real name Eugene? What was that? Is Flash Thompson's real name Eugene? Um, I'm not entirely sure. You just got really clear. Oh, uh, Comic World dropped out. Oh, um, yeah, because I just looked at a a, a picture and it seems to have. It looks kind of a close up of Agent of this bigger venom and it looks like it looks like this is agent venom and we were totally wrong he just looks bigger and he has like certain stealth items on his 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 like watch and he has the shoulder pads and he has like markings and stuff and a shield uh on his like face he just looks different and then it says it's eugene thompson so unless flash thompson is like you know let's see here yeah if you just look up agent venom it should be like the very first image yeah his name is eugene Eugene Flash Thompson. Yeah, then that should be it. If you just look up um, Flash, Th- or a, I'm sorry, Agent Venom, then it will probably be like one of the very first, um, very first things. It's really interesting. It, it is. It is him. He, if you looked him up on the Marvel Wiki, it is right. It is him right there. It says Eugene Thompson or six one six. That's what he is. It looks like. So that is yeah. him. Yeah, that's that's cool. That makes that makes, makes me a lot more sense. Yeah, he looks way bigger though. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know, maybe because the symbiotes like to evolve, so they, maybe yeah, that's what happened. But yeah, definitely, it looks interesting. I'm um, surprised. That could definitely be something that they, they that they could do with that. And um, again, back to the Star Lord being a girl, um, that could definitely add a new spin on it. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Oh, you're you're back. Hey. Oh yeah, I've been back for a while. Accidentally left the call. <laughs> I have to ask, what do you guys? How do you guys feel about this diversifying thing that they're trying to do? Because I, I, I read a comment somewhere online where it was like, "Marvel's Secret War is a secret war against anti-diversity," because it looks like they're just trying to, you know, spread all the minorities into like the yeah. Avengers and everything. I, and, I feel like, um, in order to try to keep up with like society, they are trying to do that. But in comics, it's not racism that they're doing it's superheroes and that's how superheroes are so i get they're trying to like incorporate uh you know like gender new like girls and uh different races and things like that but still they're i don't know i don't know how because it feels like it's just too try hard like stan lee even spoke about spoke up about it not too long ago where he was like if you want to make uh l um you know, gay characters make a new character. If you want to make, you know, someone from a different race make a new character, like they, like if you see Web Warriors, they have Spider Man UK, Spider Man India, they even have freaking Spider Ham. You know, like you can make new Spider characters. Spider is cool though. Yeah, that's not even that's not in it. You know I mean? That's just Spider Ham. <laughs> hey, cool. hey, being a pig is a minority. All right. <laughs> no, but <laughs> honestly, that too. I agree with that. I agree with what Stan Lee is saying. There's no that's reason the, uh, to take already existing characters uh, that Bobby. sticks. What's that? Like with what they did with Bobby? Yeah, yeah. There's just no way to ha- to give it, you know, 50, 50 60-year-old characters of continuity and oh, suddenly change them. Like, I don't know where, oh, he's gay. I don't know where, oh, he's this now. Like, it doesn't make sense. Like, just yeah. create new characters and they'll be... I mean, you can see the new characters work out. Obviously, Spider-Gwen worked out. You have Kamala Khan, Miss Marvel, which ended up being, like, hugely popular. Yeah, Miles, and, Mo- Miles Morales. Miles Morales, that's another one. So you have new characters, and it's, you know, I don't see the reason of why you would change certain things, because to me, it's not like I'm against diversity, but it's at the same time, it's like, if it doesn't help the story, why change it? Exactly. If it's not going to, yeah. you know, it, it feels like it's just pandering just to me. Trying, yeah, they're just trying to almost be that kid that fits in <laughs> with everything yeah. else. They're trying to bring comics to make them fit in. But, yeah, just make a new character. Don't try to make it fit in as much as if you want to have, you know, different characters, then make new characters like that. Don't take Spider-Man and try to push him out to bring some, some new character in. I give in Miles Morales is awesome, but, you know, keep – make Miles Morales. Make a Latino, African-American, half, like, make a, a kid that's going through the same thing get bit by a spider. How they, because they did it with Silk, like you were saying they did it with Silk, she also got bit. Like, not yeah. just her, it was her, Peter Parker, and then she also got bit. So, can't they do that again? 
because they have the genetically engineered spider and the radioactive spider in different versions depending on what you look at. So can't maybe maybe he is friends with Peter Parker. Maybe he went to high school with Peter Parker and he was like almost kind of like a best friend that we see as like a hidden best friend and then he meets up with them and is like, hey, I'm Spider-Man and uh, maybe you could help me take on the responsibility of being like my sidekick or something. And that way they don't have to like try to push out this character in, in order to be racially sensitive, I guess. That way yeah. it's not just all one thing. I, I, get, mean, it. Yeah. I get it. I'm sorry to cut you off, but I get it when it's like, okay. when it's, uh, oh, it's it's a lot of work to come up with a new character and they might not stick. And I'm like, that's cool and all, but over the last couple of years, Marvel's bought out a bunch of new characters and they've stuck. Like, the biggest example, like I said, is Spider-Gwen. You have Silk and then you have uh, Miss Marvel Kamala Khan, who is, um, I want to say she's Middle Eastern American. So that's definitely a, a big step in for minorities. And she's a breakaway. And she's an inhuman. And her powers aren't really, like, that really impressive. Like, she can grow big. I think her powers are, like, she can grow her limbs to big. Uh, she can grow stuff, you know, different parts of her limbs to different sizes or something and some other. But she's, but she's a... Uh, She's popular. Like she, her comic line. She's yeah. she's part of the new of the new Avengers lineup. Her comic line was popping. So I'm like, why can't you just do that with everything else? Yeah. 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 It's yeah. No, doable. that that makes sense. Yeah. I feel. Yeah. They're just. They're just. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm all for new characters. I'm. I'd love to see new characters actually. Yeah. Me, yeah. Me too. That'd yeah, be nice to see new ones. They are adding new characters, but they're almost like pushing out characters. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So yeah, we'll see where that takes us. Yeah, yeah, yep. definitely. All right, so you guys want to start wrapping up, or? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I have a. Uh... <laughs> I have yeah yeah we can wrap up. I have a uh, picture to send to you both. Um, but yeah, so. Yeah, this one went a little bit over, but of course we had interesting topics to talk about, so um, it makes, you know, uh, yeah. especially with the comic things, we could literally go all day about the, the comic cover things. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and so, um, yeah, there's definitely definitely a lot more that, that we could hold, and if, um, I feel like we could almost do an after show on this, but... Uh, if, like, you know, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, there's always room for possibility. Like, I'm planning doing an in-depth coverage a video based on Nerd Hype News for all the comic covers where I'm just going to go over and give my thoughts on each and every one of them. Um, yeah, but aside from that, I guess... like a great idea. Yeah, I'm, I actually, guess, I, I'm actually going to do that now. Thanks yeah, for the yeah. idea. <laughs> yeah, no problem. I'm um, we, with my we, current thing that... We, well, we should. Years. Well, we, you know what would be cool to, for us to do is that if we each take like a certain number of comics and we each discuss like oh, those yeah. comics, and then one that's person discusses a yeah. section, and then that's you, uh, and then we, uh, you know, is it off and off like that? We just kind of like you want to see the rest of them, you know, link them to this channel, link them to that oh, channel. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that would be pretty cool. Yeah, we, that's something we can definitely do. Yeah, kind um, of like an inter-channel project, and we could do that on the website if you want to do that for exclusive content or either or, but um. <laughs> I guess right now we could talk about see if uh, we anybody has any kind of like announcements that they want to say. Uh, is that directed towards anybody specific? No, I'm just saying if anyone wants <laughs> to make any announcements, like yeah, no, might as well right now. Um, yeah. So I'm gonna be doing. Of well, actually, you know what? I shouldn't announce that yet because it, I'm making a video about it. Um, I have a new video that you guys should check out when it comes out. Probably, I don't know, three. No, whenever it comes out, maybe tomorrow. Um, and so that way, see, my goal here is because I might be leaving to go away for a couple days. I'm gonna schedule like five videos to upload. It's something um, that I know learned from uh, old, you know, things that I used to do. Old videos. Mm -hmm. uh, if you if you do a bunch of videos at one time, and then schedule them all to upload. You take a lot of stress off yourself because in the moment it might be stressful to have to edit it edit it all. But instead of having instead of having that stress span out over days, you can like 
get it all knocked out, and then you don't have to worry about it. You just have to get the email notification that your video has been uploaded. And that way, right. um, there's – yeah, so that way you can have all these videos out, and if you're if like you're in the heat of a moment one day and you're like, damn, I'm not going to have time to upload a video because I have all these things or errands or uh, I have to, I, my, maybe my friends want to go hang out with me. I'm going to go see a movie, something yeah, like life that. life happens. Then life you got happens. it covered. Yeah, life happens, and you got yourself covered. Um, it's almost like an investment for your future by editing. Did you uh, see the thing I sent you, by the way? Yeah. <laughs> did it open up? Did it? It was it. Did it move? Yeah, it was. It, was, it was a gif. Yeah, it was the funniest <laughs> ever because um, I pulled it up on this page, something that they were. Uh, I forget what it was, and that was just like repeating on loop. I just died. <laughs> but yeah, um, what about you, Comic World? You got anything to talk about? Any announcements? Um, no, not really. Um, I don't have anything planned right now. What about I don't you, know. Dark hype? Oh, um, yeah, I got a couple. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually drop an announcement video probably tomorrow. Speaking about the next project for Nerd Hype that we're gonna be working on, um, it's something I might have I discussed in my last uh, in the, our last comic talk, but it's more of the in depth comic book videos. Like we're gonna have a couple segments. Like I'm gonna do the segments called Comicisms, which is about you know in depth looks at certain uh, aspects about the comics. Like my like I'm just gonna give you the first uh, preview of the first one. It's about how the pim particles work since Ant Man's coming out. A lot of people might have questions about, you know, how Ant Man can shrink and grow. A uh, subatomic particle. It's fictional, obviously, that yeah. it was discovered by Hank Pym by entrapping it in an, an, an electromagnetic field that allows the user to shrink and grow in size by basically sending uh, your mass away to a different dimension. Oh. So I'm going to be going in depth about that, and I'm going to make explain. So if somebody were to say, travel to that other dimension and Ant-Man was shrunk, could they, like, take his mass and make him permanently small? I'm pretty sure they could. It's just I, I don't think there's any other medium to get into that dimension. It's called the Cosmos Dimension. I think there's no other way than to use that subatomic particle, so you have to have control over the PIM particles themselves. Uh, that makes sense. So I'm going to be discussing all that about, you know, how they work, you know, all this history through the publication of comics, you know, the users of the PIM particles, and even the usage of the pin particles to travel to abstract realms like the underspace and the overspace, microverse, macroverse, all that. So I'm going to be breaking it down. That should be dropping sometime next week. Uh, I was intending to drop it this week, but I've had a lot of stuff happen. Like you were talking about, life happens. Have problems with my car, then I had problems with this, and so I've kind of been running around everywhere like a chicken with a head cut off. But expect <laughs> expect the first comicisms to drop, and then. Personally, I will also be working on discussing certain trade paperback stories and just going over and giving them in small little, um, in small, I guess you could say little, I guess you could say I'm spoon feeding them to you. It's just a little short run over on some of the trade paperback stories, you know, explain them to you real quick and then move on to the next one. So that's just pretty much what's coming up. And also expect the next Infinity Cast, which will probably have you guys. It's just I've had my other uh, co host kind of busy as well. But we're going to have a, an Infinity cast based off, like, Secret Wars and, you know, other comic talk. We'll probably discuss more of the comic covers on there as well. So I'll make sure to give you guys the information for that. All right, yeah. Totally. So that's I'm, it. So does the radioactive spider give you martial arts abilities? No. Okay, because no. I was just thinking back. When did Spider-Man or Peter Parker learn how to fight? Because he, he went know, to a wrestling match, like, one time, but and he, like, knew tricks and stuff. Wasn't he a wrestler, like, before? No, he, he wasn't. He, no, uh, he just joined the match for money, right? Yeah, he because the spider physiology helped him, along with his spidey sense, uh, the, oh, yeah, the, yeah. Physio, the physiology has helped him dodge, and then basically you don't have to, if you're that strong, if you can just land one hit in, it's over. Yeah, I guess that but makes sense. But the he moves he performs learned. and stuff. He eventually learned how to do martial arts. He actually created his own martial art to help cope with his, uh, in conjunction with his spidey sense, called the way of the spider. So when you see him fight now, that's one. That's the martial art he uses. Yeah. So yeah, just as a little aside. Yeah, that makes sense. Alrighty, guys, is that, is that, is that are we good? Yeah, that's yeah. uh, it's about that time. Alrighty, so I hope you guys all enjoy this. Uh, make sure you go to everybody's channel, like it, subscribe, check the website, and uh, yeah. Yep, so this is Danny Mac from Nerd Hype signing out. Believe the hype.
in this comic world. I will see you guys later. And as always, keep on marveling. Right. Bye, guys. Take it easy. <laughs>